The animal world is so full of little known species and a large percentage of unstudied species. If you love to hear interesting facts about animals, then this video is for you. Today, we're looking at animals that are very hardworking species. We know they're out there. You might immediately think about ants, but there are so many more. We wanted to know which animals are even harder working than humans. We therefore did our research and came up with the following list. We hope you enjoy the video. Here are the animals that are more hardworking than humans. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Beavers. These semi-aquatic rodents originated in North America and Eurasia. However, they have moved into other areas as well, such as South America. These creatures are a prime example of hard workers in the animal kingdom. Beavers have the ability to build dams in streams and rivers, and they use these dams as safe burrows for their large families. To build their homes, they use branches and trunks that they cut down themselves using their sharp teeth. These dams also help control flooding and the movement of pollutants better than in areas where beavers don't live. However, not all of the beaver's habits are beneficial for the environment. The amount of work a beaver can do is amazing, as they can fell hundreds of trees in a short time and build dams to stop the flow of the water and even large streams and small rivers. Alpine Swifts Alpine Swifts fly continuously for six months without stopping. Alpine Swifts spend most of their lives in the air, living on the insects they catch in their beaks. They drink on the wing, but roost on vertical cliffs or walls. A study published in 2013 showed alpine swifts can spend over six months flying without having to land. All vital psychological processes, including sleep, can be performed while in the air. In 2011, Felix Leitchi and his colleagues at the Swiss Ornithological Institute attached electronic tags that logged movement to six alpine swifts, and it was discovered that the birds could stay aloft in the air for more than 200 days straight. How is that for hard work? Salmon. Typically, Salmon are anadromous. They hatch in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, then return to fresh water to reproduce. However, populations of several species are restricted to fresh water throughout their lives. Folklore has it that the fish return to the exact spot where they hatched to spawn. Tracking studies have shown this to be mostly true. A portion of a returning salmon run may stray and spawn in different freshwater systems. The percentage of straying depends on a species of salmon. Once a year, adult salmon migrates back from the ocean to the river where they were born. That means going against the flow of the river, swimming against strong currents, dodging predators and fishermen, even leaping up waterfalls. They exert so much energy fighting to get upstream that after spawning, they are completely spent and die. Salmon literally work themselves to death. Ants. There are thousands of ant species in the world, and they eat a lot of different things. Some are carnivores, eating any insect or animal they can subdue. Others gather millions of plant seeds and store them in underground granaries. And some are even farmers, using gathered leaves to grow fungus to feed upon. One species, the leaf cutter ant, harvests leaf fragments, then use them in underground gardens to grow a nutritious fungus to eat. Next to humans, leaf cutter ants form the largest and most complex animal societies on Earth. In a few years, the central mound of their underground nests can grow to more than 30 meters, or 98 feet across, with smaller radiating mounds extending out to a radius of 80 meters, 260 feet, taking up 30 to 600 square meters, or 320 to 6,460 square feet, and containing 8 million individuals. Regardless of the species, all ants are incredibly strong, able to lift loads that weigh 10 to 50 times their own weight. They put that strength to good work, hauling food and defending their colonies against enemies. They never, ever stop working. Honeybees Bees have to work so hard because flower nectar is mostly water. Worker honeybees perform different behavioral tasks that cause them to be exposed to different local environments. The gut microbial composition of workers varies according to the landscape and plant species they forage, such as differences in rapeseed crops, and with different hive tasks such as nursing or food processing. An individual bee has to work 10 hours a day for six days to gather enough nectar to create just a thin 
thimble of honey. It's not just the workers that are busy either. A queen bee can lay as many as 1,500 eggs in just one day. When we think of bees, we think of workers. Imagine how much time it took bees to produce the honey you eat. Earthworms. Earthworms play an important role in ecology. They eat organic waste and transform it into fertile soil, full of nutrients. However, to do this, they need to spend hours and hours digging tunnels through the earth and eating as much as possible. Larger terrestrial earthworms are also called megadrills, translates to big worms, opposite to microdrills, small worms. The megadrills are characterized by a distinct slitalum, more extensive than that of a microdrill, and a vascular system with true capillaries. These animals can ingest 90% of their weight in a day, then they can excrete up to 60%. And one of the most interesting things of all is that these creatures have no teeth. Instead, they use a very efficient digestive system that includes a sucking mouth and large intestine. Arctic terns. Arctic terns are medium-sized birds. They have a length of 28 to 39 centimeters, or 11 to 15 inches, and a wingspan of 65 to 75 centimeters, or 26 to 30 inches. They are mainly gray and white plumaged, with a red orangish beak and feet, white forehead, a black nape and crown, streaked white, and white cheeks. The gray mantle is 305 millimeters, and the scapulae are fringed brown with tipped white. The upper wing is gray with a white leading edge, and the collar is completely white, as is the rump. The deeply forked tail is whitish with gray outer webs. Migration is hard, and the Arctic tern has the longest migration of any bird. The 22,000 mile journey to and from Antarctica takes the bird 90 days each way. The birds migrate over sea and are rarely seen on land except during breeding season. Considering an Arctic tern might live up to 30 years, a single bird may travel more than 650,000 miles in its lifetime. Imagine racking up that many miles in your work car. Now, imagine it is a small smart car. Monarch butterflies. The monarch butterfly, or simply monarch, is a milkweed butterfly, subfamily Dananinae. In the family, Nymphalidae. Other common names depending on region include milkweed, common tiger, wanderer, and black-veined brown. It may be the most familiar North American butterfly and is considered an iconic pollinator species. Its wings feature an easily recognizable black, orange, and white pattern with a wingspan of 8.9 to 10.2 centimeters, or 3.5 to 4 inches. A Mullerian mimic, the viceroy butterfly, is similar in color and pattern, but it's markedly smaller and has an extra black stripe across each hind wing. The eastern North American monarch population is notable for its annual southward late summer autumn migration from the northern and central United States and southern Canada to Florida and Mexico. During the fall migration, monarchs cover thousands thousands of miles, with a corresponding multi-generational return north. The western North American population of monarchs, west of the Rocky Mountains, often migrates to sites in Southern California, but has been found in overwintering Mexican sites as well. Monarchs have even been bred on the International Space Station. Monarch butterflies are the only insect that migrate as birds do, which has doubled the risks the endangered species face in the United States and Mexico. If you flew that much with predators and other dangers, you would also have a low chance of survival. Hummingbirds. Hummingbirds have the highest mass-specific metabolic rate of any homeothermic animal. To conserve energy when food is scarce and nightly when not foraging, they can go into torpor, a state similar to hibernation, and slow their metabolic rate to 1 15th of its normal rate. The highest recorded wing beats of wild hummingbirds during hovering is 88 beats per second, as measured for the purple-throated wood star weighing 3.2 grams. The number of beats per second increases above normal while hovering during courtship displays with up to 90 beats per second for the calliope hummingbird, a wing beat rate 40% higher than its typical hovering rate. During turbulent airflow conditions created experimentally in a wind tunnel, hummingbirds exhibit stable head positions and orient when they hover at a feeder. When wind gusts from the side, hummingbirds compensate by increasing wind stroke amplitude and stroke plane angle, and by varying these parameters asymmetrically between the wings from one stroke to the next. 
While hovering, the visual system of a hummingbird is able to separate apparent motion caused by the movement of the hummingbird itself from the motions caused by external sources, such as an approaching predator. In natural settings full of highly complex background motion, hummingbirds are able to precisely hover in place by rapid coordination of vision with body position. Honorable mentions. There you have the most hardworking animals in the world. Some animals that do deserve an honorable mention are as follows. Cheapy Cheapy Catfish Cheapy Cheapy Catfish is an obscure species of pencil catfish. No one is sure why it swims more than 200 miles upstream to the foothills of the Andes in Bolivia. It might be for reproduction purposes. American Eels American eels make migrations that are like that of salmon in reverse. They travel countless miles along rivers to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, where they spawn once and then die. Young eels ride ocean currents back to coastal rivers to spend the next 20 to 30 years growing up. Weaver birds. Weaver birds, a kind of finch, get their name from their trade of weaving grasses, small twigs, and leaf fibers into intricate and large avian apartment complexes. These organic cities can grow up to 300 separate nesting pairs, each in their own unit with an entrance in the bottom. With that, we've come to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it, learned something, and if you think you can teach us something, then please leave a comment. Thank you for watching. We're looking forward to having you back soon. Take care.